Hey what is up guys, welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be looking at an impossible GCSE question. So this question came up in the 20, 2015 exams um, and at the time there was kind of, it went viral a little bit and a lot of students were complaining that it was too difficult. Um, so it got labelled kind of the impossible GCSE question. Uh, and while I'm going through this question I'm going to talk about some strategies you can use to help if you get a question that you get stuck on and how you can work through that um, and what you can do to kind of get yourself unstuck. Okay, so the question says there are n sweets in a bag. Six of the sweets are orange, the rest of the sweets are yellow. Hannah takes at random a sweet from the bag. She eats the sweet. Hannah takes at random another sweet from the bag. She eats the sweet. The probability that Hannah eats two orange sweets is a third. And part A says show that n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero. Part B says solve n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero to find the value of n. Okay, I'm going to uh, um, go through the solution now. So if you want to have a go at this, pause the video now um, and then come back once you've, you've had a go at it. Okay, so let's just say you're in the paper and you get a question um, that you have absolutely no idea how to answer. Uh, so what can you do? Well, the first thing I would do is have a look at this question and make some notes to myself. Uh, so the way that I would start this is to say, well, there are n sweets in the bag, so I'd just write that down to myself. So there are n sweets. And six of the sweets are orange. So I could write, say, a little note such as orange equals six, or you could draw a diagram. So maybe you want to draw a little bag, and then, um, and then you can draw six little sweets. Whatever helps your brain to start the problem solving process. Then it says the rest of the sweets are yellow. And now you need to think, well, how can I represent that? I'm not told how many yellow sweets there are, but how can I represent that to myself other than just saying the rest of the sweets are yellow? Well, I've written here orange equals six. So I want to write yellow equals something. And if the total number of sweets is N, then the number of yellow sweets must be the total N minus the number of orange sweets. So the total yellow sweets is N minus six. Then we're told Hannah takes at random a sweet from the bag, okay? And then she takes another sweet. So essentially she's taken two sweets out of the bag and we're told the probability that she eats two orange sweets is a third. So how can we represent that pro uh, probability using what we're given? So if she picks one orange sweet, uh, well the probability is the chance of picking the number of orange sweets out of the total number. So we know the number of orange sweets is six and the total number of sweets is n. So the probability of picking an orange sweet must be six out of n. Uh, then we are told that she picks another sweet. So the probability of the second pick, well, we've already picked an orange sweet, so there must be five orange sweets left in the bag. And how many sweets in total do I have? Well, it's not going to be n because n was the, the total that I started with. So how many do I have after I picked one sweet out of the bag? It must be n minus one. And all of this so far is, com is perfectly logical problem solving. Uh, I haven't done anything crazy. I haven't kind of pulled out any formulas or anything. All I've done is taken the information from the question and interpreted it in my own way using my knowledge of probability. And now I need to figure out how I can make this equal to a third. So the probability that Hannah eats two orange sweets is, is one third. So the way that I can take two events and find out what the probability of those two events happening is, is by multiplying those events together. And you've probably seen that before. So the chance of Say if I flip a coin twice and the chance of flipping one head is a half and the chance of flipping another head is a half, what's the chance of flipping two heads? Well, that's a quarter. 
Um, so this is how we find probability of, of multiple events happening. And here we're told that the probability of eating two orange sweets is a third. So we can make all of that equal to a third. So I've just created an equation. And why would I want to create an equation? Well, it's because in part A here, that asking me to show that n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero. This is an equation. So that's the reason I've developed my own equation. And now I need to work with this equation in order to, to show that it can get to n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero. So let's work with this now to see what we can do. On the left hand side here, I've got six times five. So that's going to be 30 on the top line. And on the bottom line, I've got n times n minus one. So uh, let's, just, let's just write that in brackets for now. n minus one equals a third. And then, well, you know how to multiply brackets. So this can be 30 over n squared minus n equals a third. So now I have two fractions equal to each other. And what I want to do is to get rid of the fractions. How do I get rid of the fractions? Well, I cross multiply. So I take this and multiply it over, the, over here and take this three and multiply it over here. And what I end up with is, is three times 30 on the left hand side. So that's going to be 90. And on the right hand side, well, I've got n squared minus n times one. So that's just going to be n squared minus n. And I'm just going to go over to here now. So now I've got 90 equals n squared minus n, and I can take that 90 and subtract it from this side. And what I end up with is n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero. Uh, so what I've shown is that if I take the probabilities of picking two orange sweets, make that equal to a third, as the problem tells me, that gives me an equation which after simplifying comes out to equal n squared minus n minus 90 equals zero. So my process to solving this problem was to take all of the information in the question and write it down in a way that makes more sense to me. So what I'm doing is taking the information from the question and interpreting it in my own way. And that's my method of problem solving. And ultimately problem solving is a very personal thing. You need to find your own methods and ways that are comfortable to you. And ultimately practice does make perfect. And you will get those moments in the exams where you get a question that you haven't seen before and you just have to do your best. But in those moments, you'll do much better if you don't panic, if you accept that you're stuck, give your mind a little bit of time to process the question. And you might find that after five minutes, you see a solution or a solution comes to you because the mind works in that way. If it doesn't instantly see an answer to a problem, it will keep working over that problem until it brings up some new information you can use in order to solve it. And part B of this question is uh, simply factorizing a quadratic. So if we were to factorize this quadratic into two brackets, uh, we need to think of two factors of 90 that will be that can equal minus one or two factors that have a difference of one. And well, nine times 10 is 90. So if I use the factors nine and 10 and I need to make minus one, well, I can have minus 10 plus nine that will make minus one and plus nine times minus 10 that makes minus 90. And then if I solve this quadratic, well, n can equal minus nine or n can equal 10. And remember, if we look back at the question, there were n sweets in the bag. Well, we can't have negative nine sweets in the bag. So, so n minus nine isn't possible. So n must equal 10. And that's the answer to B. So there were in fact 10 sweets in the bag. I hope you found this video useful or helpful. Um, as I said, the process of problem solving is quite personal. Uh, but my best advice, if you come across a question in the exams that you have no idea how to answer initially, don't panic, try to stay calm, give your mind a couple of minutes to process the information. Maybe something will come to you. If, do, if something doesn't come to you after writing some notes about the question to yourself and after a couple, couple of minutes of thinking, deeply about it, move on to the next question. 
and then come back to the question at the end of the paper. After that time, the likelihood is that something will come to you in order to help you answer that question. Some little bit of information that you've gathered over your years in high school and you'll eventually get to the solution. Anyways, thank you for watching. Leave a like if this was helpful to you. Let me know what you thought. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.